Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host Matt. I'm Drew. I'm Tyler. All right. So first, first off, let's just say if you're listening to the There's, audio, is there, is there something going on that I don't know? <laughs> yeah, if you're listening to the audio version, you're going to be very confused for this entire podcast and very disappointed because this is definitely one you want to check a video out because Tyler looks fucking ridiculous right now. <laughs> he has a VR headset strapped to his head. For it looks supremely uncomfortable, like very, very uncomfortable. It is. Ex- this is extraordinarily com- comfortable. This pad up here is literally like, like mattress padding. So it's it is very comfortable. It looks horrendously uncomfortable. Though. It looks like something they would have strapped to your head in like a 18th century insane asylum, just before you were getting lobotomized. <laughs> I just, <laughs> that, that's what it well, looks like. It, it, it looks like I'm in, an, I'm in an episode of like Doctor Who, and this thing is like slowly becoming part of me. <laughs> All right. Now and, these are my eyes. Anyways, this is the Linux cast. We talk about Linuxy things, and that's the plan. Uh, the VR thing does have a purpose. You'll find out about that later. But as we traditionally do, we're going to go around the horn and talk about things that we've done interesting in the world of open source or on our computers or whatever this week. So, Drew, take us away. You can go first. Well, it's been a couple weeks since we've had a podcast, and in that time, um, I alluded that I was working... Well, two weeks ago, I was alluding that I was working on a series of Bash scripts that installed nine different window managers, X11 window managers, and Mission accomplished. I've made a few updates in the last couple of weeks, but I put a video out to support that project. I also put out two more videos in the last couple of weeks, one on my Bash RC and the other on Tilex. And the funny thing is the Bash RC that took about an hour has more views than the scripts video that took freaking weeks to create, which is awesome. No, I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not bitter at all. I also have started using Linode for the first time, and and we are using that version of Jitsi that I installed on the uh, Linode server for this podcast. And yes, Matt, I did write some documentation on the installation procedure. Oh, good. That's awesome. Um, Now, here's the question I have, and I just noticed this, but is there a way to get rid of the, like, bar along the bottom where, like, the, the buttons are? Like it's supposed to disappear, right? Oh, it does. Yeah, it doesn't for me. It's just, it just. Oh, there it goes. It's gone. Now it's back. Uh, <laughs> so you gotta have the. You have to have the. Don't use. Uh, don't use the mouse like ever on the screen. <laughs> yeah. D- don't use the mouse like ever. Okay, that's gone. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I, I was. I've been very impressed. We tested that this for like basically an hour the other night. And it's very stable. I'm very impressed with it. I mean, you did a good job. So I th- appreciate that. Thank I mean, so, so far it's putting up with me well, so that's good. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it put up with War Thunder, and, and he has a very interesting internet. So uh, <laughs> he, he always tends to have some very good background noise for us. Any, anyways, yeah, th- this was great. On the topic of your scripts video, Drew, the um, I'm not surprised that that's the way that the views turned out. Not because your videos were bad, but that's just the way that it works. YouTube, you, that. YouTube knows how much effort you put into an eff- to a video, and if you put no effort at all, it will go viral. If you put as much effort as you possibly can, and you got cinematic, like you could do a cinematic masterpiece, and nobody watches. I, I, it happens. It happens to all of us. It's really freaking weird, and it's very infuriating what happens. Um, yeah, you know. I got that's okay. So I, I sympathize. All right. So Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, you look ridiculous. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Every time I look at you, man, you just what the hell is that out of your head? What What about you? What did you do uh, the last <laughs> since the last time I talked to you, which was like three weeks ago? Uh, well, I got intensely back into VR. I didn't notice. Got yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I I I have no idea how you could possibly tell. Um, but I've. But I got the Quest 3, and I've been playing around a lot with that. I've been trying to be productive, but I kind of have an addiction to one game on here, and I can't stop. And I'm putting off, like, everything. Like, I, I have three videos, 
edited, but I have to make thumbnails for them. And instead of making the thumbnails, I've just been thinking about playing the game while I'm not playing the game. <laughs> it's pretty bad. But that's what I've been up to this past week. That's literally it. Nothing else. I ought to be in your 20s again. <laughs> All right, so for me, honestly, I haven't done all that much, but the things that I have been doing are weird. So I decided, because I'm now obsessed with the documentation thing, that I'm going to completely rebuild my Docker VM. So I'm, I've created a new VM, put it on different storage, which is something that I've wanted to do anyways, which is, and give it more storage uh, on, a, on a NVMe, and uh, gave it more CPU and everything, right? It's just a bigger, beefier VM, which is not something that I really needed, but decided to give it the space. And I'm documenting everything that I have on there. So I've so far, I've done Portainer, I've done Docker itself, obviously, and uh, I've done Nginx. And then I'm working on Image. I'm gonna each time each thing I'm gonna go through, I'm just gonna create the documentation to go along with how I did it. I've also done NFS and AutoFS, so th that was fun. And the funny thing is then I had to go, I actually decided I was going to use the documentation to set up AutoFS on another client. And I realized that I messed the documentation up, so I had to go and fix the documentation. So it was, you know, documentation is only as good as, you know, making sure it's accurate. Just pro tip. If you, if you, if you mess up in the documentation, you're going to mess up later on. So make sure you type things right. There is some Markdown. I think you can have like a, a, a call-out box or something for on, in Markdown. I need to use that more often because there's some like parts of the... I I'm sorry. I'm very, <laughs> very distracted. Don't be distracted now. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't <laughs> distract you. <laughs> Yeah, Mr. Apple Vision I'm Pro over here. <laughs> Frankly, I was just like, "What? What could he be doing?" Uh, uh, the I'm intrigued. The stream stopped to the computer, and I want to make sure it's still going, so I had to restart it. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, <laughs> I'm going to be very distracted because Tyler's over here in the fucking Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, Jesus. Uh, anyways, that's what I've been doing. I've been rebuilding that VM very, very slowly and documenting my way through it. And I think I'm going to be happy that I did, uh, you know, eventually, because I'm, uh, I'm sure that this won't be the last time that I want to rebuild all my Docker containers from scratch. Because that just sounds like something fun to do over and over and over again. Uh, anyways, that's that's what I've been doing. So, that's our Week in Foss now. To explain a little bit more about the whole ridiculous setup that Tyler's got going on here. <laughs> uh, I, he, he's got VR and whiskey. What else do you need? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. It's, it's sweet tea. Oh, I, I look like Jack Daniels. <laughs> okay. That's what it looked like, okay? It's got this, like, the square bottle. Like, I, like he, he's, got, he's got some Jack over there. It just... <laughs> he I left swear. Kentucky. This is... I'm not that far gone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Anyways, he does have a VR headset on. What we're going to talk about today is the state of VR on Linux. Now, this is an unfair topic for Drew and I because neither one of us are VR guys. So the the, the only personal experience the three of us have is going to come from uh, Mr. Hard Liquor slash T. <laughs> <laughs> T. <tea. laughs> uh, um, anyways, so he he'll have more you know personal knowledge. But what we want to talk about a little bit, anyways, is where we're going on. You know, in terms of how VR is happening on Linux, because gaming on Linux has you know blown up. You know, blown up. Uh, but VR, at least from my perspective, seems to have kind of lagged behind. So Tyler, thinks how you're the one that knows exactly what we're going to be talking about. Why don't you take us off? onto the main topic. The state of Linux VR is kind of, it's gotten better. Uh, things like the Valve Index, like they're, you can actually use it to game uh, and play your VR titles. But there has been another project, ALVR, that is for like wirelessly streaming to not just the Quest series of headsets, but multiple others. And that has really started to take off. And you can search uh, on YouTube and actually find videos of people trying it and actually being able to stream wirelessly from their Linux PC 
to their Quest headset, which I will say that is a massive uh, or a massive leap forward from where we used to be with Linux and VR. However, I would still love to see the actual like software for standalone headsets, like Android based headsets, to have a more open Android ROM, like or you know, essentially the version, the type of Android ROMs Linux users want to run, like Graphene OS, things like that that don't come with accounts and like a lot of tracking, and you know they actually care about your privacy. Seeing those kind of operating systems and like ROMs be made for these headsets would be incredible. And I think eventually we'll see them. I just, now that we're on like, now that the headsets, especially from like Meta and like the more mainstream ones, have actually gotten, well, improved upon and like we're on the third generation, they've made a lot of improvements. Uh, when I actually got this headset, I my first impressions were this headset here is probably the bare minimum for people to be able to not just enjoy the headset, but be able to practically use it as like a monitor replacement and stuff like that because the screen resolution is high enough. They also use what's called pancake lenses here. So there's not like blurriness off to the sides. Like all of my vision is clear um, and Really, I, I think I think this is actually a good solution for, uh, I don't know, expensive monitor setups where you get like, you know, you, you spend a ton of money for expensive monitors that you're probably going to upgrade two or three years down the line. Buying just one of these and then being able to have as many monitors as you want and to be able to pick them up and carry them around your house, that's pretty cool. Like... Um, uh, do you guys want me to share the screen so I can show you like what I see? You can go ahead. Let's get it over with. <laughs> I'm just gonna freak people out. And here. So this is what I see, um, and this is the like uh, pass through mode because I can go here and be in this environment. But if I go back, oop. To pass through mode I can grab this bring it around uh, you know I could load up a different the fake hands are just like the most ridiculous thing ever oh yes <laughs> I, I don't I'm supposed to there we go so like I can recenter it grab it the only thing I don't know is like with the controller I can grab this and like move it move this over um there we go all right so that's how i've got to do it that's weird but so i can load up multiple other programs and so i can i can have something over there i can have my browser here and there is also browser games that i can go through here and i can play some of these games which is pretty cool um but yeah i can i can also hook it up so i can have you know, monitors here hooked up to like my Windows or Mac computer. Theoretically, I haven't tried it with ALVR yet, but I theoretically should be able to do that for Linux as well, which is pretty cool. Dude, this is amazing. I, I just, I am blown away. Yeah, like I can, like, because I've tried it with the monitors and like with the virtual desktop like applications, I can have faux monitors and just like make them and then put them anywhere I want, anywhere. And then I've still got this thing here. So I can like close that away and then have my virtual desktop monitors. And I had one that was put right here, like over this monitor. And then um, I had monitors over there and like I can grab the monitors the same way I can grab uh, this menu. Okay, so is that gonna be like, okay, so I saw videos of the Apple Vision Pro thing and, and like, Casey Neistat would have like a monitor he put in his living room and then he could walk into another room, come back and the monitor that he put in the living room was just like still there. Can you, yeah. do, can you yeah. do that with that? Yeah. Right. That's kind of cool. <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's good. That's, that's kind of cool. I, I, I'm, I'm going to be a little bit of an old man here though. First off, you look ridiculous. 
Um, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, no, I will not argue with that one. Yeah. That but one al- also, sure. you say it's comfortable, but is it comfortable like five hours from now? With the regular head strap that comes with it, no, not at all. After about 45 minutes, it starts to hurt because uh, it has little like plastic bits at the back that kind of dig into the back of your head and the front strap pulls against your forehead so you get like a line here that's like starts to hurt and then on the back of your head but with this head strap which cost me about 40 bucks it's so cushiony up here and then on the back it's got this big padded like back part um i mean i can take it off but you can see it up there and when you, when you take when you wear it for five hours, when you take it off, do you look like you had uh, like um, diving glasses on, like yes. really tight, and you have like outlines around your face? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I can get around that. <laughs> so just I can just just imagine he wears it for. Let, let's just say his world comes true, and he, this is where what he switches to. He gets rid of his monitors and he uses it for a full eight day, eight hour day of. Of working, you know, in spreadsheets. I mean, like, let's just say he does that, and then he's done with the day. He takes off his kit, which which looks like he'd be tangled in at least one cord, maybe two. Uh, and he gets out of everything, and then he walks out into the world, and he has these big, gigantic, fake-looking marks on his face. <laughs> like like oh yeah no like <laughs> no matter what when i play for an hour especially an hour or more and i take it off i have goggle face and this head strap here parts my hair down the middle <laughs> so i look ridiculous when it comes like as soon as it, this comes off i've got goggle face and a strip down my head <laughs> where it looks like i'm balding but like in the weirdest way possible i have one little piece that points up in the back and we just call you alpha alpha <laughs> <laughs> <That's the laughs> thankfully it's not that bad yet oh, okay so let me ask you this question you're using that on connected to a windows pc right now no. You're using it on Linux. Nope. You're using it on a Mac. Nope. It's connected to itself then. Yep. Okay, so what about the ones that have to be connected to a computer? Do you... Like... I assume that the ones that connect to computer are more powerful? Uh, no. Actually, this one right here is the most powerful one that you can get. Um, now the price tag reflects that. It, uh, like I've got the 512 and it's expensive as shit. It's like $650. It's not Apple Vision uh, Pro expensive. Well, thank God. Yes. <laughs> uh, I- anybody who gets one of those props to you, I wish you had, I wish I had that kind of money. I think it's like 3,500 or $4,500 for that headset. Um, but you said that $650. One, so I, I'm actually surprised it's. Yeah. It, 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 I mean, it's essentially the price of a console and, I mean, if I'm being honest, like it pretty much is like, I mean, if you treat it like a console, it's better than one actually. Do you have Uh, to have motion trackers in the, like the room, like up in the corners or is it just one self-contained unit? It's all done from the headset. And like, uh, again, like you saw me using hand tracking, there is controllers. I don't know where I set them. (laughs) Because he can't see. He's got the goggles on. (laughs) They're down here. That's funny. These things. (laughs) No, I mean, I can see, like, trust me, man, I can see really well. Um, I don't know if the actual, like, casting to the computer does it justice, but uh, there's a depth sensor uh, up here in the middle. So I can, like, not only can I see my surroundings, but, like, I, I have my depth perception as well, which is coming from the Quest 2, like, for me, I've, so I started all off with the Rift S headset back in the day. Then I've upgraded to the Quest, the Quest 2, and the Quest 3. So I've had every uh, Facebook, or before they weren't made by Facebook. That was a better time, but whatever. Um, uh, I've had that, and then I had a friend who had the Valve Index. The Rift S was when you hooked up to the computer. When you hook up them to the computer, your graphics is better, assuming you have a nice computer, like a good gaming computer you are going to get much better graphics, but the resolution wise and the way like things play from the headset on this one, uh, there's quite a few games that are getting graphics updates for it. And 
they look pretty damn like they don't look as nearly as much as like phone games as they used to. Um, they look much better. So who makes who makes the uh, the headset that you're using right now? Meta Facebook. Okay, all right. It's still Jack Daniels. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 all right. So that that's the state of what Tyler has. Let's branch out a little bit and broaden the topic. So uh, let's talk. About, so the state of VR is something that we've talked about before because there have been there are dreams right that is going to replace things in terms of productivity like. We all know that it's a good gaming thing. Like, Tyler's obsessed with the game stuff, and that's because Tyler's a gamer, and that's what he does. And it, I'm a, I have never tried VR, but I assume that it's really good for gaming. Like, that's if that's what it was, that's what it was, that's what it, its sole purpose was, this wouldn't be a conversation, right? Because it's good at gaming, right? And if, if that's the type of thing that you're interested in having, if you want to, you know, look like Tyler does right now, <laughs> you're, you're, you're going to be great. But the thing that makes VR interesting is that there are dreams outside of it, right? We have the metaverse. We have whatever it is that Apple decides that they're doing in terms of, of VR. Like, we, t- we Tyler, you and, I be- you and I talked about this when we talked about VR the last time, was that the, the dream was that Apple would come into this space and revolutionize it, right? They'd make technology that would be awesome, Everybody would want to use it. Everyone would want to develop for it. So you not only would have a, a huge flooding of games, not only for, hopefully for Apple stuff, but for Meta and Steam as well. Uh, but you'd have all, you know, they'd advance technology so far that more and more companies would get into it, create different he- headsets and stuff like that. And the Apple Vision Pro has been out now for, what, six months or something like that. And while that's not a huge amount of time, it seems to have been a fairly big flop, right? And some of that has got to be the price. Like $3,500 or whatever it is is a ridiculous amount of money to spend on something that looks ridiculous. But more than that, it just it doesn't feel like... I mean, usually cost doesn't seem to matter much to Apple guys, but th- this time it did. So... Where do you think, let's, before we jump back to you, Tyler, Drew, do you think that there's ever going to be a point for you where you're going to want to be like Tyler and get one of those things? Not necessarily because of gaming, but because of like, you know, a whole bunch of monitors. Never say never. No is my immediate answer though. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I was explaining this to, to Tyler and a couple other people re- um I suffer from motion sickness. And when I think about using something that alters my perception and and motion, it's, I don't know that I could do it. That's just me personally. I I mean, I think it's really cool. I mean, and, and, and I'm fascinated by it, but I don't know that I could actually use it. And, and Tyler's explained that you actually have, there are ways to get used to it, you know, however, I don't know that I have that within me to get used to the motion of it. So I'm going to say no, but I am really curious as to where it's going. In fact, I, I'm, I'm actually more interested in how open source is going to play a part in the software development for this. Now, I don't know that open or, you know, I don't know that the community is going to actually build hardware, but I know that the contribution in software is going to be significant at some point. I mean, maybe the open XR project. That's done a lot. It's very useful. Yeah. And, and it actually would ensure that companies and their VR applications are compatible with Linux based systems. So, yeah, I, I mean, to answer your question, no, I don't see myself using it, but it's really fascinating to me, uh, the technology, the software, who's going to pay for the hardware, who's going to, you know, how open source plays a part of this, this whole thing and, and, and where we actually will go within my lifetime. I, I don't know, you know. Well, I'm, I'm really, ex- I mean, to build off what you said, Drew, I'm really excited to see people kind of take these headsets like because with this with this one with the ar where you can actually see your environment and walk through it very well um the apple vision pro does that too but you know at a much more expensive cost 
I, I think with headsets like that, we're going to end up seeing people go like can reconsider whether or not they want to go get new nice monitors for their workstation or the new latest headset. Like, cause especially with these like wireless ones where you can stream from your workstation, like it's nice to be able to pick up, like if you want to go to the kitchen and you're watching a video, instead of having to get pause it on the computer, load it up on the phone or wherever, watch it while you walk around the house, like grab a snack, grab a drink, whatever, uh, maybe come back, maybe don't. Like that transitionary period is way easier because you just get up and walk away, grab the monitor and walk with it. Like that's kind of cool. It is cool. Okay. I'm going to be the old man again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, all right. So humans are social creatures. That's universally true. I mean, some of us are loners and we don't talk to people and it'd be perfectly fine for us to sit in our, you know, one room with that thing on our head all day long and have all the monitors we want. That part is cool. Uh, but let's just say, Tyler, right now, you didn't have your monitors and all you had was that. And you wanted to share, uh, uh, you wanted to show your mom an awesome video that you just found. How'd you do it? Like on here? Yeah. Like without leaving it on your head and not like picking up everything off from your head and handing it to her. <laughs> How would you? Yeah. Um, you don't well, have, you don't... I have WhatsApp on here. I have Facebook Messenger. Um, and then I can get like Signal. Um, Whole bunch of other those would be what you would consider workarounds to the the traditional thing of hey mom this is a video on my monitor you know what I mean? like you can go to the oh, room bring oh, her oh, in like literally and show, show her yeah you. like yeah. an yeah. actual yeah. social ex two experience people looking at, two people in the same space looking at the exact same thing yeah yeah that that's what apple was trying to do in some cases with those weird creepy fucking eyes up here on the outside right like they wanted to, people to feel like they could have this thing on but you could still have conversations with people in the room. Because right now I'm looking at Tyler and <laughs> I can't, every time I look at him, he's like, he looks like a, you know, a cyborg. I didn't even, I, I didn't even think about it, but actually the way I would do what you're talking about to show it to her is on here. Uh, and most VR headsets, I think even steam VR can do this to some extent. Um, but you can send it to a TV or your phone. So, uh, well, you send it to your phone, then to the TV. So, so your your world without actual monitors isn't really something that would work in that situation. You'd have you still have to have other screens if you wanted to do that type of thing, right? Yeah. All right. So, yeah. so my my point is is that that's a very solitary experience. You know, you, you, it's probably great for like online game where everyone's virtual, but uh, if you're just like one person you have one headset, which is probably the case because most people, I mean, it's not like an Xbox where like two or three people or four people can each have their own controller and have split screens. If you want to play multiplayer with people who are actually in the room with you, you each have to have a headset, which is $600 a pop, which is, you know, weird. Also, you'd have to have, I mean, you, probably you're going to have to have quite the room because you're probably all up moving around. Right, you know, at least in some, in some area, especially with like the hand gestures, I can just see, you know, four people in a really small, like, you know, kid's bedroom or whatever. You're gonna knock somebody in the head with a with a fist while trying to do a boxing game. It's gonna be hilarious, right? So, I think my biggest cynicism when it comes to even just the gaming aspect of VR is that it it removes even more of the human part of technology like we've already done a, a lot of we've already pulled a lot of the human humanity out of technology where we spend most of our time online in front of a camera this like this is this is about as human interaction as a lot of people get three people who have never met each other sitting in front of a camera you know with webcams like like we've met but you know we've never shaken hands if you know what i mean right vr takes even more of the humanity out of it and that is one of the things that i think a lot of people would you know find themselves turned off by drew go ahead but that's just in a gaming situation too the vr the technology itself can be i think applied in a number of different ways it seems like 
gaming software is so far ahead of other types of software, even engineering type software, for example, where like, for example, I, I mean, I, you know, I've told you guys before, I used to work for a civil engineering company and it was a software company that specialized in roadway design and, and stuff like that. So the, ver the reality of how cool would it be to virtually drive through the interstate that you just designed uh, in the engineering software when you're trying to <laughs> sell it to uh, lawmakers who are going to give you the funds to build that roadway. I I'm just using that as an example. Well, that's a really good example. Like, yeah. Because there, there is nothing like actually entering your own project, testing it for yourself. Like, it... That changes things. It, I mean, it also change. It could change how you look at a problem too. Like, so yeah. But, I, mean, I mean, the software, for example, that I used to work with. Like again, this is thirty years ago, nearabouts. And one of the doc, one of the PhDs that was working on the project, his PhD is in was in virtual reality, and that was in thirty thirty years ago from University of North Carolina, and he was he was demonstrating moving from a two dimensional space to a three dimensional space instantaneously. And it's not the same thing because we're talking about hardware that is completely different than anything that we had 30 years ago, but the software that is developed for what Tyler is using is impressive and can be used. I think hopefully and another of a number of applications that we haven't even thought of yet. Well, I'm I'm not poo pooing the technology. I think that I mean what just what he just showed was really really cool. I think the 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 I I think that with the Apple VR, the Apple Vision Pro, or whatever, some of the stuff that I saw, like I I was a big like naysayer of the Vision Pro, like and I still am because the price is ridiculous. But some of the stuff that it can do that I see that they've seen that can do is really cool. Like being able to basically have your entire house be your technology world where you can just like have a monitor in the bathroom it just lives there you know what i mean like it's it's just there all the time it's that's that's really cool and the, the use cases from a like a just even like a more really like personal technology standpoint is it, it, very interesting i don't think that from a commercial standpoint it, it's as popular of an idea as it might have been expected to be because i mean it's not a new uh it's not a new thing at all like hololens was around 10 years ago and, that, and microsoft i'm now granted microsoft's always uh they're they're kind of like google they come up with ideas uh implement the ideas and eventually they just kill them off if they don't if they don't make a billion dollars they just kill it right and, you know that that just that's a capitalism thing right but you know, the, the idea has been there for commercialization for quite a long time. And while you can you can argue like the technology wasn't there yet, which is, you know, fair enough. I, I don't know that anyone has come forward yet and said, this is the te this is the thing that's going to make everyone in business even just want VR, let alone from a consumer aspect. Right. And maybe that'll happen. Maybe. But. No, I mean the cost. I mean, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's really been the only problem has been cost, and I do think, really, in all honesty, like it kind of goes back to what Drew was saying. Like the open source software is like it is probably what's going to end up revolutionizing the VR because really all we need is a big player like Meta to continue dumping money into making really top notch hardware and selling it at a at cost or lower and then using using that with software to build upon it to use it for other things and really in all honesty i'm not gonna lie i think most people would have already bought a vr headset and actually given it a shot if they didn't need a facebook account with the headsets that were good and cheaper like no one wants to spend a thousand dollars to get away from a facebook account you know? I don't. I don't think. I don't think that the reason why people haven't bought a VR headset is because they need to log in with their Facebook account. I don't. I don't think that that's the impediment towards buying it. 
I, I think uh, part of it is they would take one look at Tyler and be like, I don't want to look like that. Uh, uh, but even even beyond that, even beyond that, there's the idea. It th feels like the Wii. Like, you remember, you guys remember the Wii, right? When the Wii first came out, everyone thought it was amazing technology. And it was, right? nothing really had ever been like that before in terms of gaming there was a lot of really cool things there was the meat the the we the we sports and stuff like that where you could bowl and play tennis and stuff like that and you got you up and moving your fat ass around it was great like the kids loved it for five minutes like th that's what it was like and then everyone's like like the the meme even is that the Wii started collecting dust? Like, like that's the, the vast majority of people just stopped playing them because the, all the games. Now this is a this is a Nintendo type thing, uh, where they didn't really ever bring in like the AAA games. Like you can go play like Call of Duty or whatever and, and stuff like that. For me, that's the VR at least in terms of gaming. Like right now, kind of feels like that, where it's really cool technology. You can't deny it. Uh, the initial games looked a lot, a lot of fun, like that one where you play, you have swords or whatever, and you play along to music, and it knocks off the blocks or whatever. That looks like cool. Looks like great exercise, um, and, and it, you know, looks a lot of fun. But it wouldn't be fun for very long. You know, like it'd be cool for a little bit, but then eventually I'm gonna go back and play Halo. And I, I, Tyler, you can answer this better. Is like, could you, if you wanted to, play Call of Duty on that? Well, there not call of duty the actual game but there are games that are either probably better or worse than call of duty depending on your play style available like because there's like onward which is um like that was a more i believe that one's the more tactical like version of call of duty then there's contractors breachers there's there's a lot of games like and i mean Especially when it comes to PC VR, you've got like Half Life Alex, which that one is a literal, fully fledged AAA game, and All right. great. Let, let me okay. <laughs> I, I, I'm I, I'm I'm gonna remember I'm playing Devil's Advocate here, but I, I know kids and say, well, yeah, hey, kids, it doesn't have Call of Duty, but it has something like Call of Duty. It's just as good. It's like some some he's saying. Yeah, we don't really have the cereal you really, really like, but we have the off-brand knockoff. It's almost as good. I mean, like, you know, I, people are very attached to brand names, right? And Call of Duty is a brand name. If you had brand name on the Meta Quest, Facebook would be out there shouting to the high heavens, we have Call of Duty. Uh, or, or, you know, we have you know, whatever, right? And they, they don't because, or they can't do that because they don't have it. And it, I'm just using Call of Duty as, you know, one example. You can basically use whatever example you want. Um, the AAA games just aren't there. Uh, um, and Ooh, I, I mean, Pavlov, Pavlov is like Call of Duty. And, mo <laughs> and most people mod it, so it's got Call of Duty maps. Well, I, I will so, print out the words, it's like Call of Duty. Well, but again, everything is going to be like another regular game because you can't have a regular game in vr like you can't have regular activision activision if vr was popular enough could with effort and i'm not saying it's easy but they could bring they could make a call of duty game for a vr headset that that's possible oh, i mean they could but they could but, uh, now as to whether or not they ever will Right, and, maybe, and maybe that not. that's exactly my point, is, is that the, the brand name stuff matters because that's what's going to bring people to the platform. Uh, some people will will see that block, you know, sword block thing. I don't know what that was called. You know, what's that thing called? That Speed Saber. That thing. Um, pump, some people will say see that, think it's cool enough to buy a headset. That's majority of people, probably not. Oh, no. Right, no. And, and, and I think that the, the Apple Vision thing has the exact same problem. It doesn't have... Like, not not only is the price tag huge, mungus, but it also doesn't have the thing, or the things that you need in order to draw people to the platform. Like big, gigantic AAA games, or just to bring it back to more broad stuff, the the productivity stuff that you're asking. Like, yeah, it's really cool that you can have you know multiple monitors, but it has to be 
more than that to justify e even just six hundred dollars, let alone thirty five hundred dollars. You know what I mean? It has to. There has to be something. Like I'm. I looked at what you you have there, Tyler. It looks really really cool. I don't want to buy one though. Wait. So the idea of having a seventy five inch TV that you can grab and walk around your house with is not that cool. I not. What do I need to walk around my house for? <laughs> like I sit in three different chairs when I'm sitting down, and I have a TV out there. I have my monitors in here. I mean, I, I suppose if I didn't have those things, sure. But I, I mean, people do already have. I mean, you, well, I mean, you, hold you, on. Just so we're clear, I'm not trying to sell you a VR headset. Right <laughs> so I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm just, I'm just saying, that if, if you're going to draw people to a platform that they don't have, you have to offer them something that they don't already can already somewhat experience, right? Like multiple monitors. If you wanted multiple monitors, you probably already have them. Um, and yeah, the technology that you're showing is really cool, and it expands on what multi monitors do because you can obviously. You can go full on Nate and have forty of them all around you. That's awesome, but is it enough to have someone order it? Some people, sure. Mass market adoption, probably not. Um, and that's that just brings me back to the whole Call of Duty thing. If they had things like Call of Duty, if they had, you know, Halo, um, if and then this can kind of bring us back to the Linux thing a little bit, is like the. I mean, not, I mean, not, I guess not really, but the, 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 the Valve Index, like that was the thing, right? And Valve had an opportunity because they would be able to bring a lot of the Steam catalog to VR if they could do that, right? If, if they could pull through on that promise, that would make the Valve Index very attractive because the, the, the Steam library is huge, has a ton of awesome games attached to it. But that promise really never materialized for many reasons. One, as Ty Tyler, you said, it's really hard to take a, a standard video game and make it into VR. But also, the hardware is like at this point it's like seven years old. Like, like it's really old, and, and Valve is known for that kind of stuff, right? So, well, but just so we're clear, there are many many games that do have a VR version. Most of the Resident Evil games have VR versions. Green Hell has a VR version. A Rise of the Tomb Raider has a VR mode. Like, the, and I could keep going. Like, there's a lot of AAA titles that do have VR support. But I get your point. Like, we, we would need the game that sells PCs on VR if we want to actually have... It. And it's... And I... I also get your point, too, because, like, even though I could have a massive, like, I could have monitors littered around my house, I'm probably not going to go out and buy a new device just for that. When you saw from my recording earlier in the podcast, I already have plenty of monitors and screens, you know? Like, <laughs> that's not a that's not a device-selling feature, so... You know what's yeah, interesting like, though is if let's say let's say I don't know System seventy six decides you know what we're going to get in the VR game, and they start building VR sets like you're talking about you know so that you don't need to be part of Meta, you don't have to have that kind of uh, login procedure or what have you. That would be an interesting that that's something that would interest me for open source. For Linux, uh, that would be really cool. I just kind of want to throw that out there. <laughs> I, I would love. It. I mean, it, I would love it if it was System seventy six in particular. That would be even better. Uh, I really, I really like their engineers. Like everything they do, that that would be incredible. I like. I I really don't think it's that. I, those headsets would, no matter what, obviously cost more. But I think those would be great freaking devices. Like, I would love to have that. An, an actual device that's open source. And that's really what I'm more interested in is like how, how open source plays a part of it. You know, again, am I going to like run out and, and buy one? No, probably not. But at the same time, I, I respect the fact that the application work done to develop the environment is 
unbelievably cool and 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 maybe useful in a number of different areas that's that's my interest is where it can be applied elsewhere because again i am not a gamer and never will be but the like i said the application beyond that is interesting <laughs> i think that there it has a lot of opportunities and and if systems my problem guys my problem is that I'm a huge cynic. Like, I, I really am. And, no. And, uh, I know. I know. <laughs> hey, you would have never, never, never don't, noticed, buddy. Don't say um, that. My thing is, like, have you guys used Linux on mobile? Like, have you, have you ever touched, like, a Pine phone before? Or, uh, what, you know, a Librem 5 or whatever? Linux has been trying to do mobile for decades at this point like 20 years it's still very bad like it, it's still relative to ios and android not very good now there are some there are some versions of linux mobile that aren't bad like they're usable but they're not you know you're not going to have the the app selection that you'd get on android or ios at least not easily you're not going to have the the hardware support anywhere near close to what you'd have it on thing my, my point is is that if we can't do mobile how would we do vr but i don't think that they're ex I'm, I'm going to try to argue against my inbuilt cynicism for just a second and, and just say that they're not mutually exclusive like just because they can't do mobile doesn't mean that somebody can't come along and be like awesome at vr um and i think i think that if like System76 came along and did a phone, they'd do uh, a, a, a Linux phone that was actually good. Like it'd be really expensive is the thing. Like Pine64 came out with a phone that's $300. And while uh, that's mid, you know, like, like low end range for an Android phone, it's like still $300 and it's still considered very, very cheap. And it's built very, very cheap. And it, ha and it comes with Manjaro for... <laughs> Why did you make? Why did you put Vanjaro on it by default? Uh, that's such a horrible experience. What terrible idea! Like seriously, Mobian exists and it's far and away better. Like, and I'm not just saying that to pander to Drew. It's, 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 it's so much better. Like it actually functions. And, and p part of the Manjaro thing is just because it runs Plasma by default, and Plasma isn't stable on the desktop. I don't know what they're thinking, even wanting to put it on mobile. I don't. I don't get it. But my, my point is just that I, I think that when it comes to something like VR, it requires a huge multi-trillion-dollar corporation to do it and do it well. Facebook has a ton of money. They can throw billions of dollars at, and, and then come out looking like Tyler. <laughs> just, like that, that right there, ladies and gentlemen, is the result of billions of dollars in, in R&D. You can tell that they never looked in a mirror. You can just tell that they developed this thing in a vacuum, never looked and actually saw what they looked like uh, while wearing it. Because, Jesus Christ, you look like, you, you, you look ridiculous. And then you got the other end of the thing where you can definitely tell that Apple did look in the mirror and they got a little bit vain and thought they were, they, they overthought a little bit because it looks, that looks equally dumb. Uh, and the, the technology that they wanted, of what they wanted to do wasn't quite there, so they emulated it enough. So you have these really creepy looking eyes looking out at you. Not great. Um, but you can tell that they've spent billions of dollars on these devices in R&D. And I don't think that from a Linux, per, like a like an open source hardware manufacturing thing, that I don't think there's a company out there that exists that can could put that type of resources towards it. Unfortunately, that that's just the case. Now, would be interesting though. Could Nvidia? I'm going to stop you there. Right there. Could Nvidia go there with that kind of like? No, I, and and granted, you're you're gonna say, well, they can't get a freaking you know Linux driver to save their lives and so well, on. Well, so no, no, I, I'm not saying that they wouldn't do VR. I, they may very well make like a VR chip or whatever, or you know, I mean, they've made hardware in the past, but it's definitely not been open. You know, what I mean, it, it'd be proprietary. Oh, that's that fair. Out, right? Yeah, that's fair. But what I find interesting though, like like because there's going to be you know tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of those things that Tyler's wearing uh, out there. 
as time goes on, you know, like the next version will come on and, and Tyler probably has like three of them sitting around somewhere or he's passed them off to, to cousins or whatever, you know, right? Whatever you do with, with VR when you're done with it, right? You hand it to somebody else or get stored in the closet. But what would be interesting is if something like that could be jailbroken, right? That's where the, like the, the open source software would be really interesting. Like, cause you could jailbreak that thing so that you could install, say, like, I don't know, Debian or Arch or OpenSUSE on it. And, you know, and then once you can get to that point where there's a whole bunch of people who have jailbroken devices out there, then a community starts forming. Yeah, it's always going to be very niche. It's always going to be very, you know, it's very small. Um, but that's how Linux started, right? Like very, very small. You know, people just tinkering on Usenet or whatever and, and doing really cool things with hardware. And that's that really interests me because you could take that th that cool technology, you know, basically and try to develop for that. Because we're never going to be able to, I don't think we're ever going to be doing the hardware like you want to do, Drew. But we do have that stuff. Let's jailbreak it and, you know, make it you know, open source and do awesome, cool things with it, create a, ourselves a community where we ho have a whole bunch of, you know, interesting things on that, you know, do it for. Now, it'd be cool if, like, Facebook would open it up willingly. That'd be cool. I'd be I'd be interested. I mean, I have not used F-Droid. I just, to, I don't know when we talked about <laughs> mobile for a second, but, you know, I'm almost thinking to myself, you know, I've got this Google Pixel and I've never, like, thrown F-Droid or anything like that on there. And I'm wondering if that is even how good it is comparatively. Um, but well, I've never even tried it. After it's just basically Google play, but with open source stuff on the inside, uh, the one I want to try, try as a ROM called Graphene OS. That's basically oh, yeah. Android, uh, but without the Google stuff on it. So that sounds really cool. Like lineage is out there. That's really far along and works really well on a lot of different phones. You know, it's it, those, those types of things are great for having, for extending a life of phone after like Google or Samsung or whatever has abandoned it. The problem, of course, is that you have to root a lot of the stuff. Like, and the pixels are great. Like, you can root those things really easily. They don't disable the hardware. You know, it's it's fine. But like on like Samsung or whatever, you root it. They turn the camera off. You can't ever use the camera again in some cases, right? It just you know, it's proprietary bullshit. But you know, that's just kind of the way it is, unfortunately. Um, and that's what I worry about with like the VR stuff. If you did find a way to, to, to jailbreak it or whatever, you know, is it still going to work? I mean, and, and you really do, unfortunately, in order to have my dream of being able to have like a small jailbreak community, there actually does have to have like a community because not one person is going to know all of it. You know what I mean? They're going to be able like, maybe they'll find the way to jailbreak it, but then they're going to have to have an OS to put on it an OS that's actually going to be able to work on it, which is probably going to entail making sure that like something like, I don't know, Raspberry Pi OS or whatever it is, put, you put that on there or whatever, because it's probably an ARM based piece, you know, uh, system. So, you know, it, it'd be very complicated, but it, I mean, it's happened before. I mean, with all these ROMs and stuff for Android, like that's how, a lot of these things have started. You know, they wanted to use something that wasn't Google approved, so they rooted the devices, forked Android, and created their own. Or in, in the case of a lot of like Le Linux stuff, they've brought Linux onto it. You know, that's how it started. And, and I think that with like VR, you have the opportunity for that type of thing to happen. But I, I think that there needs to be more hard. Like, <laughs> It has to be more than just Facebook doing this shit. That's the problem. Well, there, I mean, there is. There's the com like. There's one company like Pico. I think is their name. Yeah. If you don't, if you don't know the name, headsets. they're not actually doing things. <laughs> well, I can't remember because they make different headsets. Like, but it's. I think it is Pico because it's Pico Neo, and then they've got a different headset that's super expensive. I can't remember which that one is. But yeah, there. I mean, there's other. Com there's a lot of companies, big screens, making their own. Like, there's a lot of companies making headsets. It's just we don't have. Other than Facebook, there's no one making like big a standardized. Lot yeah. Yeah. Like, really selling the numbers. And that's why everyone was really hopeful about about Apple, right? Because they can, they can sell those types of numbers and bring it in, and that that would be the tipping point for VR, AR, or whatever. And it just it didn't happen. Uh, and the thing, the thing, uh, I don't, I don't know about y'all, but I don't trust Meta. Like I, I, I really don't trust them. So I, I really think if Valve would get their shit together, <laughs> yeah. like they have with the Steam decks, yeah, and 
bring bring back another killer VR headset just at a much lower price point. Like, I mean, a five hundred dollar headset from Valve, um, I could see that being a real game changer for VR. Like, as long as we've got quality lenses, we've got nice upgrades, and I would like to see it be standalone and you be able to run like a, like them do some kind of special um, like standalone version or section of Steam that you can run anywhere you go, and then when you get home, you can play your normal. Well, I mean, like, even even if they didn't have that like technology quite yet, they could use something like Steam Link and just I mean, people um, the vast majority of people who buy one probably already have a computer anyways, and they could just use that type of thing. And also, before we completely move uh, move on, and I forget about it, I did also want to say there is actually quite a few uh, like VR a- actual like desktop environments for Wayland and X. Um, I didn't know about this, but this has already been a thing for a long time. Um, so people have been working on window managers and environments for virtual like VR headsets for a while. So like assuming valve comes out with a good competitive headset, we could easily see like desktop environments, window managers built around utilizing like your VR headset. And if Valve does what most of the industry is moving towards and making an AR headset as well as a VR headset. Like that would be really nice for having like your desktop environment there with like you have the option to play your like your Steam games and stuff, but you also have an actual environment you can work in that's still in your envi- like you can still see your actual environment. Makes it feel much more natural. Well, I don't know if the, I mean I, I know that the Apple Vision Pro can do this, but like you have a monitor in front of you, you could play on that virtual monitor like actual games that aren't VR. Would that be cool? I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I've I, just so you know, I've done that before with the link for this. Um, I didn't really show it off, but I've got a big cord with pulleys that hooks up to the computer, so I can go around the room in VR. But um, when I'm hooked, wait. And I have completely lost my train of thought. I had no idea. I have no idea what I was going to say. Wow. What's the, what did you say? The, the pulleys, does that just provide power? Is that? No. Uh, the pulleys are for, um, actually, I think I can actually tip it up so you can see. That's just my light. Uh, where is it? This way? <laughs> I, I have no idea. I can't give it to it. <laughs> that didn't work. If That's he okay. actually had peripheral vision, he'd probably be able to find it. <laughs> Wait, hold on. So the cord here, the pulleys that are attached to it um, here with a string that goes up, the pulleys are there just so the cord can get longer. Get, yeah, it can get pulled down as it's hooked up to the headset. And like a, is that like a around. HDMI cable or something? No, it's a USB-C cord, um, just regular old USB-C. Uh, it's a 16-footer. I still don't know, understand what, 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 so is it just, prov- I'm going to ask the same question. Does it just provide power or does it hooking up to the PC and you're playing a different oh. game? Or- no, the, so the, the link cable, uh, provides power, but it also, um, allows it to like play the game and use it as a, um, output as a video oh, okay. output. All right. It's oh, okay. Pretty right. nice. Uh, the the link cable, like, you, so you pretty much only have two choices. You can do wireless or wired, and the wired method you need if you're going to do anything in a game engine and you want to test your game and m- make changes at runtime. You're going to need that because uh, the only other way is to, like, literally deploy it to the headset. Okay, guys. I think that the, that we talk that through anything else you want to say on the topic of, of vr we didn't really get around to the metaverse um which is this oh it's right? terrible uh <laughs> it's it's literally facebook spent two billion dollars and i'm not kidding you most you can go to the web browser on this device 
And there are games that you can literally just click one button in the web browser and you have a VR game that you're now inside of playing that most of the ones I've played from the web browser, I can say, are objectively better than uh, Facebook's Metaverse. It's It was laggy. It, out of everything I've tested, it was the only thing that was laggy. It had horrible bugs like i would be floating about 15 meters above the ground at random points which uh if you have a fear of heights like me that's really fun thank you then there was also the beautiful mechanic of uh there was a gun in the game that shoot like or like shot like phasers and when you shot them the fps would drop by 10 every time i clicked a button so I'd shoot a bullet and the FPS would just like dip. Like that was fun. It was great. I, I highly recommend it. You should go try it out. We'll have a great time. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, let's go ahead then and move on to the nuggies of the week. So this is the section of the show where we talk about tips, tricks, picks, whatever you want to talk, call it. But the reason we, we, why we call them nuggies is because I hate that word and I have horrible friends. That's just the truth of it. Uh, also, if you want, if you want, I have a I hate nuggies t-shirt on the shop. Shop that's going to cast the work. There you go. I am the new LTT. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, Drew, your nuggie of the week. You know, we talked a little bit about Nextcloud a couple weeks ago, and I was kind of oblivious to the Nextcloud bookmarks application that's built into Nextcloud. And oh my gosh, I was missing out because I know a lot of people will use like Link Warden or something like that to manage their bookmarks. But Nextcloud bookmarks, along with a open source browser extension called Flocus, F-L-O-C-C-U-S, is a really good open source self-hosted sync and share solution for your bookmarks. It's outstanding. And I, uh, I just started today <laughs> with it, but I'm, I'm super impressed by the next cloud bookmarks, as well as this, uh, this uh, browser extension called Flocus. That sounds really cool. I'll have to give, give that a try. All right. Uh, Tyler, your nuggie of the week. Mine is ALVR. It is the Linux streaming thing for Quest and other wireless capable devices. Uh, so they've got a pretty easy to find GitHub when you search it. And it's not too difficult to set up for Linux. Again, there's like YouTube videos on it. So pretty much anybody should be able to follow one of the, uh, those and get it set up. And yeah, it's pretty nice uh, if you either have a VR headset or know somebody who's got a got one you can borrow for a while probably check it out see how Linux uh, is with VR check cool. it out all right, so mine's the coolest of them all. I'm sorry, it just beats you guys' all the hell. So, um, I, I, and I'm not even lying, it, it's so cool. So I use Vivaldi as my browser. I, I'm a big proponent of it. It's fantastic if you're a tab hoarder. It allows you to just all these ways of organizing tabs. But today's isn't about tabs. Vivaldi has a feature called Quick Actions. And it's another it's another setting and a multitude of settings. But basically what it is, do you guys know Automator on Mac? Basically, you can just you can tell tell Mac OS to do these things, right? You, you you can you know go do this 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 then this then this 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 like if this then that like that right? It's that, but for the browser. So I, for example, I wanted a way to to move a tab from one workspace to another with a key binding. By default, there's not a way to do that. But with quick actions, I, I was able to go in and say, first, copy the URL. Second, close the tab. Second, move to the second workspace. Next, paste the URL and go to that URL and then show me the URL. And that's basically what we do. And then there's just tons of little actions that you can do. You know, make bookmarks, you can do all, basically anything you can do in the browser, you can set as a quick action for it to do. And then you basically will go through this so you can, assign that quick action 
to a key binding and then it will go through all of these little actions one by one by one and do this thing. So you can basically build a script to do whatever it is you want in the browser automatically with a key binding through these quick actions. It's so freaking cool. Um, and and I, I don't, there's so many different things you can do with it. I, I, my little pea-sized brain hasn't been able to explore all the awesome opportunities yet, but it's cool. And <laughs> just like there's no other browser out there as far as I know that can do something like that and that's just it just makes me happy so yeah it's it's not open source I know Vivaldi is not an open source browser I wish it was but as of the moment I don't oh care. I think you're disqualified so co clearly it can't be the coolest of the three <laughs> so yeah uh, it's scary man we have a Linux podcast we're trying to talk about Linux but you know I've got a Facebook meta like thing strapped to my face we're talking about Vivaldi this is dangerous man we, we, we might be, as the kids say, changing. Yeah, I don't know. All right, anyway, so that one is in the books. This is the Linux cast, folks. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so in, in any number of ways. The best way is to head on over to the, the website. You can do so on your VR headset or just on a regular old computer or your phone or whatever you want to do. It works on everything. Linuxcast.org is where you'll find all that stuff that has all of the previous episodes all the way back to season one. So if you want to binge the Linux cast all the way back to se season one, episode four, you can do so. The first three episodes, those are in the vault, okay? Uh, you, you remember how how Disney, every once in a while, would put Bambi in the vault? Um, well, those first three episodes are in the vault. They're never coming out. Uh, <laughs> they're absolutely horrible. They're so bad. Uh, anyways, uh, you can catch all of the previous episodes there on the website. You can also check out blog posts that I put up there occasionally as well if you want to do that. Uh, you can email us at email at linkscast.org. That's probably the best way of contacting us. If you want to get in con contact with Drew or Tyler uh, individually, you can always send me that email and I'll forward it on to them. Uh, you can find Drew on you the YouTubes. He actually knows how to make YouTube videos. He's at youtube.com slash justaguylinux. And that link will be in the video description and on the, the website as well. Tyler does have a YouTube at, uh, channel. He's too busy in his little metaverse to actually post videos. That's just the, the, the case. But anyways, you, you can subscribe to his ancient and dusty and uh, <laughs> ill-used um, YouTube channel by going to youtube.com slash zanyog. You can find all of our contact information for the Discord, for Patreon, all that stuff on the linkscast.org slash contact. Uh, hi, puppy dog. How you doing? I know it's warm in here. <laughs> We're never turning the air conditioner off again. I know. Uh, anyways, uh, youtube.com or youtube.com slash linkscast if you want to watch this live. We record this live every Tuesday at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And I mean every Tuesday. We never miss one. Um, <laughs> ever. Yes. Never. And it's never Tyler's fault when we do miss one house. <laughs> never. Never. <laughs> it's always his fault, by the way. It's always his fault. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it, that's not fair. Sometimes it's my fault, but it's usually his fault. It, it's usually mine. <laughs> and anyways, uh, you can catch us live. We do record this live in front of a studio audience. Uh, we don't know everyone's name. Uh, that's a Cheers joke. The vast majority of people in the, in the audience probably don't even know what Cheers actually is. It's a good show. Yeah. <laughs> Three runs on USA. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, you can watch us live on YouTube.com slash LinuxCast. We have a wonderful time. But if you can't watch us live, we do post the edited version, which is basically just the show minus the ums. <laughs> uh, courtesy of Nate. And that's posted on every Saturday uh, on the, the YouTube channel and on your favorite audio podcatcher. So if you want to watch us on, or listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you can find us there. If you are on one of those platforms that allow you to leave a review, leave us a review. We'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the podcast. Thank you so very much for those of you who have done. Thanks everybody who does support me on Patreon at, at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. You guys are absolutely effing amazing. Without you, the channel, the podcast, none of it would be as it is right now so thank you so very very much for your support i truly do appreciate it if you like this video like this video with a thumbs up that's actually right right in frame wow okay <laughs> not for you guys but for the people who are actually watching it thumbs up the video that's it for this one we'll see you next time Bye, everybody